Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Amanda Levesque and I specialize in the art of helping high achievers and high performers actually slow down and prioritize well-being and rest. Many high achievers know intellectually that rest and self-care are important, but they don't actually take the time to do it. We're a society that is filled with information and tips and strategies to be our best, best selves and live our best lives. We can know all the things in the world about what might be advantageous to our mental, physical, spiritual well-being, but unless we take the time to actually implement what we know, we won't see change, at least in a way that's long-term and sustainable. So that's where I come in. I work with clients to apply all the information that we know and what we know to be good for our well-being, actually apply it to our lives. So this takes having me hold them accountable through my coaching, through my programs. It takes looking strategically at schedules and figuring out how to sprinkle moments of presence and rest throughout a busy day. This is different for every person. It looks different for every single individual. It means that I guide my clients to get to know their unique nervous systems and their unique bodies and choose what meditations, what movements, what practices work best for them. And again, it varies per person. Everyone resonates with different things. We're so used to being told what is best for us. One of the things I'm most passionate about is that each of us deep down knows what is best for our bodies. We can tap into this knowing by amplifying our intuition and leaning into what feels good. This may not make logical sense, especially in accordance with all the things that we know from what society teaches us. But when we follow what feels good, what feels resonant, what our intuition is guiding us towards, that is generally what is best for us and our unique path towards restoration and health. So I hold space and gently guide my clients to sharpen their skills of inner knowing and listening to their bodies, listening to what feels right for them. With all that being said, I have found some big roadblocks that many high achievers and high performers face when they actually hold the intention of softening, of taking time to be still, of finding nervous system balance, of self-care. I'm going to share these things with you in this video as well as some possible things you could do on your own to help counteract those blocks. The first roadblock is logistical. It's just fitting it into a busy schedule. This is truly one of my superpowers. I'm really, really good at working with any sort of schedule. And I work with all sorts of clients who have a wide array of commitments. It could be the high demands of work, parents, familial commitments, and honestly, just life. Life can be a whole lot. So it can be really, really helpful to have an outside set of eyes on your schedule, especially mine, because I'm really good at this, but I'll suggest a few tips. The first one is take a peek at your evening and morning routines. Typically, you're more of a morning person or more of an evening person. If you are a morning person, might you wake up just a little bit earlier to enjoy some meditation, some contemplation, maybe a little bit of reflection. If you do, I know it can be really, really hard sometimes to wake up even just like 10 minutes earlier, like to set the alarm. It can be so tempting to just hit snooze, but you will feel so refreshed and rejuvenated and set the day in this really balanced and centered way. If you are an evening person, consider what you are doing right before bed. So this doesn't have to be a grand hour-long routine, although that would be great, but you could put some earbuds 
right by your bed and make a habit of listening to a body scan or a grounding meditation as you fall asleep. Or you could set aside 10 minutes every night to do some gentle stretching before bed. Winding down before bed will help improve your quality of sleep, which will help you wake up in a way that's more rested. Number two suggestion for this roadblock of logistically fitting it into a busy schedule is create a rhythm in the middle of the day. So I call this a midday reset. It is selecting something that will refresh and rejuvenate you. For example, I love to go to yoga classes in the early afternoon. That is my favorite time to practice. It really feels like it resets me for the rest of the day. If I, my brain's buzzing from all the work stuff I have going on, or if I had appointments at the beginning of the day, I find that if I can make it to a yoga class or do a meditation midday, the afternoon, I feel refreshed. I feel clearer. I feel more focused. You might also have a favorite meditation, or you could even take a midday nap. Remember, it doesn't have to be super long. So even 10 minutes can do wonders. The third suggestion for this issue of scheduling is to just give yourself some grace. If you end up skipping a day or getting thrown off track, don't let it discourage you. Stuff comes up. We are humans. So it's like sometimes I see my clients, if they miss a day or two, they just throw everything else out the window. They're like, well, forget it. I'm failing. And I mean, do your best to hold yourself accountable to show up, but just try to keep it light and playful. Let it be, let it be with ease. Feel that balance between having discipline and showing up and then also letting it go when you don't and laughing like, you know, it's just not working today and my life's a whirlwind and that's just where I'm at, but I'm going to try to show up again tomorrow. I always suggest scheduling five days on and two days off when considering some sort of regular wellness routine in the form of stillness and restoration. So this can typically, you know, this could be a a Monday through Friday weekday, Saturday and Sunday weekend schedule, or you can create your own rules. One of my clients enjoys something he calls weekend Wednesdays. I love that. So he... He's off on Wednesdays. That's like his Sunday, kind of. And I suggest on these off days, letting yourself flow with whatever feels good. So let go of the schedule, let go of the goals. These also, you know, they might be days where you have longer chunks of time for yourself. Maybe not. But you might indulge in long, like a longer movement class or a longer nap or a really yummy bath or anything that has to do with self-care and grooming and taking care of your nervous system. You might also on these off days, just let it go all together and let yourself just be. That in and of itself can be really, really restorative. When we have nothing set on the schedule or no goals, that can often set the nervous system like at a space where it feels like rested and spacious. Lastly, Create your schedule ahead of time. Create a container and a rhythm so that when you get swept away, when life gets really busy, when the tornado of life starts to swirl around you, that container can hold your intention. So sit down right now, pause the video, or maybe after the video, pull up your schedule and pick three to five slots of time throughout this week that you want to incorporate rest and stillness. Now, once you've done that, once you've jotted in those times, and it could be anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, whatever whatever you can flow or fit in, decide what you want to commit to. So choose your activities ahead of time. Do you want to attend a restorative yoga class at your local studio? Do you have one in mind? If so, add it on your schedule. If you need to take a little bit of time to do some research, Go ahead and do some research. Do it now so that when life gets wildly busy, you just know where to go. It's built in. It's baked in. It can be really difficult to decide what to do. There are so many choices. There's so many choices. It's like choice overwhelm, choice fatigue to the max on the World Wide Web. 
This is where I come in too with helping my clients pick the right practices that are for them. I'm pretty intuitive. Also, my Science and Magic membership has a ton of class videos. And one thing that I do that's different than other membership platforms is I intentionally curate them every month. And even every week, I have a weekly embodiment practice in hopes that this will eliminate some choice fatigue. So I have a printable PDF that my clients or my members can pull up on their computer, they can print off, they can hang it on their fridge. I also have a selected class page where I pull classes that I feature every month. And then I have a weekly embodiment page where if members don't even want to sift through any options, they can just go to that embodiment page every week and see what I posted. So I'll include a couple of free classes from our YouTube playlist and meditations below in this video description in case that might be helpful for you if you just don't even want to go and look for classes to take. I'll just include them right below. The second block, the first one was just a busy schedule. The second one that I see my clients face is discipline. Actually doing the thing, rolling out the mat and practicing, being still and meditating, lying down and letting yourself nap. The main reason that I noticed this block with a lot of people is that there is an underlying belief that resting is not productive or maybe taking care of ourselves is somehow taking away from our business or our family. These blocks will definitely stop you, especially with a busy schedule from sitting down and being or doing the thing. They're not true. Don't even get me started about this because I will just go on and on and on. I've done a few videos already about this, about why it's not only advantageous to our productivity to prioritize well-being, but it's essential, essential. I'll link those videos below and I'll probably talk about it in further videos. And it's one of the main topics of conversation within dialogues um, within my clients. But once this belief has shifted, it's easier to show up for our well-being because we know that it actually doesn't take away from our work or our family. It adds to it. When our energy is more balanced, when we are more restored, we show up to anything in our life in a more whole and rested and aligned way. When we're no longer having this internal battle, well-being just becomes a part of our work. It's like, of course, I'm going to sit down and meditate because that means I'm going to show up to this meeting in a way that's more productive, for lack of a better word. But that's more productive, actually, than I would be without meditating. There's all sorts of reasons for that that are you know grounded and rooted in how the brain and the body work. However, it can be difficult to shift this belief because many of us are we're conditioned to think otherwise. We are conditioned to think that the only way to be productive is through go, 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 checking things off a to-do list, getting things done. So we can say that rest is productive, all that we want, but until we believe it, nothing will shift in a way that is long-term and sustainable. I'll do another video about how to shift beliefs, but this is one of the big ones that I work with my clients on. In my High Achiever Rehab program that just launched this month, I'm so excited, we are constantly and will constantly be unpacking this belief. We'll be sharing stories that counteract it. We'll be holding each other accountable to practice living as if we believe it to be true, even when our subconscious hasn't bought into it yet. And most importantly, this program, we will be creating a culture where the prioritization of well-being in our work is the norm. It's the standard. This, this creating community and culture around how we work in and of itself will do wonders for our belief system. The idea is eventually to get to a place where we can naturally prioritize self-care and well-being, where it's like it's intuitive, it's innate. For me, I might fall out of my practice for a couple of days, 
but I always come back to it naturally. I don't have to push myself to come back to it. I crave to come back to it. Why? Because I love it. Because I've seen and felt time and time and time again that doing so adds to my business, adds to my life, adds to my relationships. And it just feels good too. I feel better. I'm more... I'm more in my body. I experience pleasure in a brighter way. And this is where accountability, like having having a coach or what I offer in my High Achievers Rehab program can be really helpful. Because in the meantime, when we're not there yet, when we haven't really bought into this belief that it feels good, that it's productive, it does take discipline to show up for our well-being. So maybe, maybe you have an accountability partner with a colleague or a friend or a family member and you check in once a week and say, are you showing up to your stillness practice? How are you doing with with your rest? Do you feel rested? What does your system need at this time? Having accountability around us can be really, really helpful to start the process of showing up for ourselves in that way. The third block that I see my clients run up against is literally not being able to sit still enough to recover or regenerate. And this has a lot to do with nervous system safety. I find that high achievers, a lot of us, tend to be drawn to high-intensity sports or high-intensity activities, things that require a lot of movement, a lot of cardio, a lot of power, a lot of strength. So you might think CrossFit, running, biking, like hot, intense yoga, yoga with weights. I think yoga sculpt is what that's called. Why is this? Well, part of it could be a personality type for sure. Like people with high performing energy tend to go 100% at things, 110%, 120% at things. But another part of this is that high performers are often on the go, go, go. They're putting out fires at work. They're approaching situations from a place of high strategy and high mental power. They are showing up for presentations and work meetings, and they're in front of people a lot. So there's a lot of adrenaline running through the body. That's what this means. If you're showing up, if you're go, 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 there's a ton of adrenaline rushing through the body. And the bridge of the nervous system that is associated with the stress response is called the sympathetic nervous system is activated. And that's to give us energy to show up to things that are stressful. Think about this. It wouldn't make sense to be running from a bear in the woods and then sitting down and closing your eyes to nap or meditate or take a bath or do restorative yoga like it just wouldn't make sense you're running you're filled with adrenaline your heart's pumping your your you have a lot of power and then to just sit down in the middle of that and close your eyes and meditate that's going from like 120 to 10 percent it can be really, really, really good and helpful to discharge all of that extra energy through high intensity movement or just movement in general before you sit down and before you're still. Oftentimes, high intensity movement is the only way that high performers find release from mental activity. And high intensity movement isn't bad. In fact, it's really good in moderation. And when balanced with, what do you think I'm going to say? Rest. However, if the nervous system is in a perpetual state of survival, if we have survival hormones running through the bodies more often than not, it can feel more counterintuitive to be still. Our thoughts will continue to race. When we're in survival, our psychomotor speed increases so that we can effectively respond to threats around us in a way that's quick and responsive. The body might be fidgety because there's a lot of extra muscle strength to fight the threat. The heart will probably be beating really quickly so that blood can pump into the extremities for that extra energy. And so you're just sitting there in all of those sensations 
and it's like can be pulling teeth. It's really, really uncomfortable. So the issue is that when the body is chronically stressed, experiencing these things in a chronic way, it needs to rest and be still to recover. Or over time, you will hit burnout. Your adrenals will become fatigued and you will hit a state of exhaustion. And that's not fun either. So well-being can be, of course, with movement and active stretching and high intensity intervals and strength training. But what I'm really getting at here is stillness for recovery and restoration, stepping aside and letting the branch of the nervous system that's designed to recover, to regenerate, it's called the parasympathetic nervous system, can start to express itself. So what do we do about this? Again, this is one of the things that I work with my clients on. So we do some deep dive, science-centered learning on the nervous system to understand how it works. And then I offer techniques for them to learn to apply that information and work with their nervous systems. Again, this is one of those things, there's a lot of science information out there right now. And I I often have scientists work with me to apply that science information into their bodies, to apply it to their lives. So that is really where my area of expertise is, is taking the science and integrating it into direct experience. You might consider the following in your daily life for nervous system safety. How do you feel safe? So you might not logically feel unsafe in your mind. Like you might be like, I'm fine. Nothing's coming up. But remember that your nervous system is quite literally in a state of survival when it's being activated all day, every day. When you're in a state of reactivity and responsiveness and high alertness, more often than not, you have the stress hormones running through your body. So this could be a bottom up activation from being in a state of chronic stress. It might not even be like you logically feel like you're not safe, but your nervous system in a state of survival needs to feel safe in order to let go and release. You could also not feel safe because there's literally traumatic events stored in the body. That's another thing that could be coming up as well. So I have a few suggestions to help the nervous system start to feel safe in stillness, in rest, letting go, maybe with the eyes closed, maybe not. When you're resting, when you're being still, make sure that you are in a space that you feel comfortable in. So little techniques might be making sure that you're facing the door of the room that you're in so that the door isn't behind you. Having the door behind can sometimes make the nervous system feel jumpy. You might surround yourself with really comfortable blankets and pillows If you have a weighted blanket, I love using weighted blankets when doing practices that are lying down. You might also choose to play nourishing background music if silence makes you feel a bit edgy. So take the time to really set your environment up and choose the things that surround you. You could do some work with a therapist, a somatic practitioner, or maybe a trauma-informed yoga instructor. That's another option. So, you know, practicing stillness in the presence of someone who is trained in the response of nervous system activation and the nervous system in general, it just, it can do wonders for helping your nervous system feel attended to and supported, especially if there's traumatic memories that are arising or it just feels like impossible to sit still can be really helpful to have professional support for that. And, you know, if these traumatic memories do arise in stillness, if you're actually having memories come up, it can be so helpful to work with a therapist to support you in processing those memories so that you have access to stillness in a way that feels safe for you. It is so powerful to ask for help from healers. It has been one of the biggest steps on my journey towards stepping into self-care, towards, you know, restoration towards healing, all of that stuff. You could also, another thing you could try in terms of working with this block of being fidgety is try integrating intentional rest after your intense workouts. 
So it's going to be easier to lie still, to be still after pushing it really, really hard. For example, make it a habit to do a 10 minute meditation after a really hard run. Put on the earbuds, lie down, sit still, try experiencing it that way. Rather than just stretching, I know a lot of people do just like, you know, gentle stretching after exercise, which is super important. See if you can take a restorative yoga class, something where it's really going to let your nervous system let go. This could be in person or virtually, like you could time going out on a run right before you take a restorative yoga class at a studio or a gym, or you could have it set up on your computer so that when you come home from your run, you just press play. It's like a no brainer. You don't have to futz around with finding the class or pulling it up. You press play. And I often like to pair the classes online with my own playlist as well to make it extra gooey. I will link a class from one of the science and magic teachers below for you to try if you're interested in doing a class virtually. Holding postures for longer periods of time in a way that's gentle and supportive, this will help the nervous system find restoration. Stretching can feel really, really good, but when we do it quickly without settling into postures for several minutes, it doesn't quite have the same release on the nervous system as holding supportive stretches does over a longer period of time. Okay, recap. The three blocks towards integrating stillness and rest into everyday life include one, a busy schedule, two, a lack of discipline to just show up and do it, and three, the lack of ability of the nervous system to feel safe because of the experience of chronic stress in the body. Recap of the solutions, one, sit down right now, pause the video or today or after the video, and literally schedule out your rest routine. Put it in your planner, put it on the calendar, then decide what you are going to do. And once you decide what you are going to do, do all the logistical things ahead of time to set yourself up for success. So put the headphones by your bed, pull up the class that you wanna take, do the research for the class you wanna take. Whatever things that you need to do that are logistical, figure it out ahead of time. Then commit to it, put accountability in place, either, you know, hire a coach, work with a friend, work with a colleague, have some accountability, someone, some way that you can check in. Then decide what you are going to do to support your nervous system in stillness. So how does your nervous system feel safe? Maybe you schedule your rest after a hard workout that, you're, that you already have on the schedule. Consider your environment. Make it delicious and cozy. Do, do some, some pre-work now to decide what, what would feel good with the environment. If you're at home, what room will you be experiencing this class in? What pillows would you like around you? Set it up ahead of time. And then, you know, maybe hire support, hire a therapist or a somatic practitioner or a trauma-informed yoga instructor to help you process that trauma that's been held in the body. And then lastly, just do it. Just commit to it. Just rest. You will feel so good. You will feel the effects right away after your first time committing to stillness and rest. You will. You'll feel them right away. And they will just continue to deepen over time. Slowly but surely, your face will become softer. Your breath will become deeper. Your shoulders will fall out of your ears. Your voice tone will become smoother. You will become magnetic. You'll become easier to be around. And the most important thing is you just you start to feel better. And when we feel better, our whole life begins to soften around us. If you want support in your softening process, please reach out to me. This is literally my life's work. I envision us creating a culture where infusing well-being into our work is the norm, where hustle culture is the outlier. My email is below in the description. I offer a wide array of private coaching packages. And as I mentioned before, I also just launched a program called High Achievers Rehab. It's designed to support this infusion of well-being and work 
through community, accountability, through actually doing the practices, not just talking about it. We can talk about them all we want, but until we actually sit our butts down to rest, we won't see much change long term. Registration for High Achievers Rehab is monthly and it's ongoing. I'll link that below as well. Thank you so much for listening. If you found value in this content, I would love for you to like this video, leave a comment below letting me know what your takeaways were, what's resonating with you, any questions that you have. Digital interactions like this really help my content to be seen by other high achievers. They help with the algorithm. And ultimately, my vision is to create a softer culture of how we work, a healthier culture, one that values well-being. So thank you for sharing, for supporting, for being interested in those ideas. Until next time.